welcome back to my channel this is Dom and today we're going to paint horses hmm so I think it must be one of the most common um, comments people have um, about painting is the fact they don't like painting horses um, I don't know what it is about horses um, but I would definitely have counted myself in that category dislike painting horses I don't know it's just a sheer volume um, the fact that you just couldn't necessarily make them look exactly how you had in your mind's eye or at least even close to your mind's eye um, but I did some I did a video recently um, where I painted up uh, oh crikey must have been uh, three units of cavalry and um, I, I have to say I've sort of lost my fear of cavalry and uh, some of the comments on that video uh, from some of my subscribers was oh, you know how do you do them how do you paint the horses and, and I always said I use contrast paints because and that's what I use nowadays and that's been my secret uh, and a couple of people said oh, you should do a little video explaining how you do it so this is what this is so I'm not saying this is you know people on YouTube will be doing absolutely awesome um, jobs of painting their horses making them looking far better than me this is the cheats guide the Dom's guide to painting uh, horses quickly and easily using contrast paints so if you don't like contrast paints you better look away so let's get started so I've got here five horses these are um, Claymore um, medieval horses uh, for some knights that I've got to paint up and so I thought well there's five of them let's paint them in five different colors and I can show you the different process so I've got here apothecary uh, white um, wild wood the always useful black templar black um, gore grunt of fur and saigor brown those are the ones I'm going to use primarily and I've got the five horses now all I've done is um, is put these again somebody asked me how do you how do you hold them when you painted them uh, I'm cheat again so I stick them on there ready bases ready to go um, so these are on these pill shaped MDF bases just super glued on for me that's enough to hold it um, that's fine I know some people have these high um fancy holders in fact I've got one somewhere but I just never remember to use it so I've just all I've done is just stick them down to the or obviously deflash them taking off any mold marks I'm aware of um, and just made sure and any of the you know when you the, the lines that sometimes join the foot to a to the to the base I've taken those off um, just to clean it up as much as I can and then I've just dry, I've just sprayed these um, with um, I, I use always use a light gray um, this one is um, Halfords um, just from the um, car well, the car repair place, or claim car maintenance shop, um, Halfords Primer, light grey primer. It's cheap, you get a big can of it, um, and I use it all the time for everything now. Um, if you're going to be painting contrast, do not use black. It, it doesn't work. Um, in my experience, black just doesn't do the job. Um, white can do, but I think it just gives it too much of a lightness for me. So I find this light grey just the perfect compromise and that's what I use. So first up I'm going to paint this guy who is the, uh, she's the Warlord's horse. Um, I'm going to paint him as a grey. So that's a bit more tricky. Um, so we're going to start with Apothecary White for this fella. Now you can see in this paint it, it does like to separate. You can probably hear I've got a ball bearing in there just to try and help it there we go so if you haven't used contrast paints before you think well what's the fuss about because this just looks like watered down paint and it does really so we're going to slap this all over the grey and if you're lucky, I'll just speed this up. I 
Okay, so that's that one done. You can't really tell the difference with this because it was grey anyway, but that just adds a little bit more texture to the colour for later on. So we'll leave that one to dry. Clean our brush. Oop, put the grey away for a minute. So next up, Wildwood, Wildwood, again, give it a good shake, and you notice, I don't know when you noticed in the sped up bit, but I didn't paint any of the, uh, so on that first horse it had some um, plate armour on, um, it also had a bit of, uh, I didn't touch that, I didn't touch the, um, um, the tail on this guy, I won't paint the mane or anything like this uh, I'm just doing the, the, the horse main horse color so here we go this is a lovely color this one look at this go on look how dark that is so we're just going to do the same thing I'm just going to slap this on now contrast paints do pull that's what they're designed to do so get a generous amount on your brush and just let it do its stuff don't worry about it collecting, that's what it's designed to do. So there you go, it already started to dry. That's him painted up. Just noticed a couple of bits of flash I didn't miss. To, but anyway, we'll come back to that. That's him done. Next one. Clean the old brush. They do dry very, very rapidly, which is useful. So next up we're gonna use the one of the most useful paints in the contrast paint range, contrast on black Templar, which is one I use a lot of. Now for this one, I'm gonna paint the entire horse. Well, not the saddle cloth or bits of wood or uh, bits of leather out here. I'm gonna do the whole uh, tail, mane and everything. Just because a black horse tends to be black all over tends to be and I'm just simplifying things here so this the whole point of this is to simplify the process So next one we're going to use the Gore, uh, Gore Grunter Fur. Lovely rich colour and I think this is my favourite horse colour. Again, just going to slap it all over. The secret with all these paints is to make sure you get a good amount on the brush. And don't be afraid. Feels like you're slapping it on. And you are. But that's kind of how it works. So don't skimp. Lovely rich colour on this.
So one of the things you do need to be conscious of with contrast paint is, and I don't know the technical term because it sort of slides on the on the model, just to check that it go, that you have actually managed to paint everywhere because sometimes you think you've done it and you go back and you look and you oh, missed a bit and you haven't really. It just seems to be the way it pulls. So that's that horse done. Look at the colour on that. It's just great. So finally, we're going to use um, Saigor Brown, another good colour for a horse. A very dark, rich brown. Again, same process. Slap it all over, baby. Slap it all over. There you go, that's him finished. Well, actually not quite, just noticed a bit. There you go, just what I was talking about, pooling of the paint. Just has run away a bit in that corner there. And there. So, we shall leave these guys to dry. Then we'll be back. All right, so, these figures, these horses are pretty much dry. You can see the colours coming through them already. Grey is going to need a load more work. But the rest of these are, you can see already what happens with contrast, what I hope you can see, is a certain amount of pooling of the colour which gives it almost a natural shade which is the whole concept of the contrast paints see so what I'm going to do next um, is painting the hair on the horse, sort of the hair, we've already got hair for, um, I'm going to paint the um, um, the manes and things like that now so if you're being very simplistic you can just paint them black black manes most horses have um, similar kind of uh, well, most horses have a very dark mane color um, so you know painting them black is not going to be a problem but I like to break it up a little bit so um, I will do a couple of them quite a dark brown as well um, and so what I'm going to choose to do for the um, the this guy and this guy I'm going to paint them with the Cylon brown and then these two I'm going to just go black well, in fact this guy's already got black tail um, but that's how I'm going to work it so let's make a start Now the mains and things, because they're modelled and textured, you have to make sure you try and paint, even with this acrylic, in the same sort of direction as they run. Otherwise you'll find areas that you've missed. And while some of those areas will be covered up by the wash we do later on, you want to make sure that you get as much as you possibly can. So this is the gold grunt of fur horse and I'm using the brown to give it a, a bit of a different colour. Now you can see on the model itself the way the mane is a bit scraggy on one side. They always seem to mold they always seem to model them that way. Like the fur, like the hair's flicked over, Bobby Charlton. You 
Again, don't be too worried if you don't get every last strand here. Just and likewise, if you go a little bit onto the horse flesh, don't worry about it. Obviously, don't go slapping it all over. There you go. Now these horses are modelled as quite um, heavy horses because they're for knights. They've also got sort of uh, the furry bits on their legs, on the lower legs, so I'm just going to do them as well. Same colour as I used before. I'm not going to really cover every last second of this, I'm just going to almost dab it on. There we go. And the more you use contrast, the more you get a feel for how it flows. Right, that's him done. Now this is the um, this is the wild wood brown you can see what lovely dark chestnutty brown that gives again painting downwards to match the lines of the, the sculpt don't fight the sculpt let it do you do its work somebody spent a lot of time modeling these figures so don't try and paint against it just let the let the modelling do the work. It's the beauty of modern figures, it's so good quality. Oops, slap that on a bit, I might. So, so it doesn't matter too much if because when we come to use the washes at the end, a lot of the misses, as long as you're not completely different colour, a lot of the misses will look like just tonality weird. It's one of the reasons why I like this technique because you don't have to be 100% accurate. There you go, next one done. Swap over, get our Black Templar out again. Now for sort of main colours, I suggest you just have a look pictures on the interweb of horses and you get some ideas of the colours what seems to work but don't get too carried away at the end of the day this is supposed to make it easy and there's plenty of tutorials out there showing you how to do beautifully painted horses and this isn't when it is this is just to get decent quality quickly and easily. Again, that sound like a broken record. Try and paint the contrast on in the same direction as the, the lines of the moulding sculpting. So you can see the hair's running that way and that way. So I'm trying to do upwards and downwards to match that. Just so I find that makes the contrast paint slip better into the little cracks. Now the black horse has already got his mane done, but I'm just going to go back over some of the mane just to give it a little bit more depth of colour. Okay, so mostly these have dried and they're looking okay. But you go, well, so what's, what's special now? Um, well, I'm going to now just do the horse furniture. The, um, yeah, because these are medieval horses. They've got um, uh, some very straps. And this this is probably going to be quite ornate horse harness around here. Um, the, the model's slightly big. They've got the very high-backed saddles that medieval period hid, had, rather, hid. 
um, and the the cloth here, but you can't. The demarcation between the cloth and the saddle isn't very clear, mainly because it's going to be hidden anyway underneath the rider. Um, but it makes it a bit tricky for this, so I'll just paint all that up, and then I will be back. <coughs> so you can see here, I have painted up uh, the horse um, furniture. I think it's called the straps and what have you on the horse. I've also done the saddle and um, the cloth there we go on all five of them so I used um, I love this uh, red leather from Vallejo for the sort of uh, strapping like that I used uh, contrast snake bite leather for the saddles um, and what did I use oh, I just didn't really matter I used the Levalathon blue for the blue ones and Blood Angel Red for the red ones. That's that lot done. So we're pretty progressed with these horses now. I know they don't look it, but they're getting there. There's our white horse, or grey horse. <coughs> I've done, um, he had sort of a protective, protective bit around the front of his uh, chest area, so I've done that in the snake bite leather. Um, so if I haven't touched any of the hair, I just thought while I'm here, I'll show you how I do the armour because this guy's got plate armour on the neck and also on the front here. Um, I just, so I just noticed that's not quite flat there. There we go. Um, so I just thought I'd show you how I do armour these days. And credit to my friend Martin, Seventh Son, his channel. Because I pinched this idea for him, because he was doing a whole load of medieval knights, and I thought, oh, that works well. So we got uh, contrast contrast paint, basilicum grey. And we're just going to slap that all over where the armour is. I'm just going to do those little bubbles there. Just makes a nice base for the armour. There you go. And we'll come back to that in a bit. So next I'm going to do, um, if you look at horses, they often have a, whoops, like a, a, a bit of white or lighter colour on their foreheads and down to their muzzles. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use uh, Brain Matter Beige, doesn't matter particularly, but it's a whitey colour. Uh, get a little bit on the end of the brush. Try and avoid the hair. Just going to dab that in. like that down to his nostrils some of these guys have got quite a lot of hair hanging down so obscures a lot of that but that's fine now if you were doing later period horses they often have their lower legs strapped so you might want to do a bit here on, on these guys but what I'm going to do with this I'm going to almost dry brush where that bit of uh, hair is on the edge of their legs just to bring that out. I'm going to do the same on the main and on the tail. I'm going to do that on all the others. Oh. 
it's going to do a little bit on the grey. It won't show up quite so much, but uh, given the fact that the legs are still grey. And this is off white. Should mean we get a little bit of it standing out. And then I'm going to leave these to dry thoroughly. I want them to be absolutely bone dry before we next do the next step. So there you go, there's the grey, there's the black, I've got to touch up a bit of the brown there by the look of it. the chestnutty one back in a bit so just going to finish off the armor so I've got uh, army painter shining silver doesn't have to be anything else I've just put a little bit on the brush and just wipe it over the top of the armor again a bit like we did with with the white we did listen to me a bit like I did with the silver almost a dry brush but a little bit more Just to bring out the the tops and the edges of the armor. And I think that works really nicely. I've also done the the, the buttons there, um, and also a couple of the horses had some little studs which I've done, and I've also done the bits uh, on these horses as well, just to sort of bring them out. So you can see they've got bits there. They've got little studs on the on the horse harness and I've just done them still you can use gold if you wish for that sort of thing but I'm using silver just to keep it simple and as I said before we'll leave them to dry so they go off camera I've just uh, put a black edge around the outside of the bases just to finish them off um, so next stage with these fellas is to give them a wash um, so I'm gonna go I primarily would use either strong or dark tone. I think in this occasion I'm going to go strong. Um, I don't know, I'm going to go strong with two of them, and then the darker two I'm going to use dark tone. We'll leave the grey out for the moment. So let's do this. So you could equally use um, one of the Citadel ones. Um, but uh, that's just what I like. So I'm just going to paint this directly onto, just using an old brush. Whack this all over. Right, that's the second one done. That's pretty reasonable. Good coverage. Let's now get uh, so that's a strong wash. Let's get the dark tone out now, and I'll do the black and the very dark horse with that. Just going to put it straight in on top of the other. Soft tone, it doesn't really matter terribly. I'm going to start with the lighter of the two horses, the light brown one, the dark brown one, sorry. And the good thing about this sort of wash, it just covers over a lot of the errors. <laughs> Not errors, but you know, things where you've just, you know, think, oh, I just didn't quite get that right. It also will darken it down, darken down the figure quite a bit. That's why you have to be careful with the, the tones you use. Experiment with a few. And there are loads of different styles of 
tones you can get different colors different shades it's a good idea and they do make such a huge difference there we go one down I need a bit more tone in there I think I used rather a lot there There we go. It's a bit counterintuitive uh, when you start out painting figures to sort of get your pa paint your figures up and then just slop a whole load of extra colour all over the top. It just seems wrong somehow. Um, but it makes a big difference. It's the biggest thing for me. Improve my painting. It's been control of the uh, of, of the sort of different washes. Right. So this is a bit more tricky. So I've got the grey here. I don't want to use it all over because obviously that will deaden it down completely and I don't want that. Um, I'm just going to use the darker tone across places like the armour. I'm going to put it on... Oops. That's why you should have a holder, you know. Um, over the leather. Basically anywhere but the, the flesh itself. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit on the leggings, just the bottom of the legs that where there's sort of bits of hair, longer hair are. And also on the I'm going to put a little bit more, another splodge down in the pot. Just a bit more on the tail and also the saddle. Just around the edge of the saddle. And just a little, if I can, carefully just down the uh, where the strap runs under the belly. bits down there, the lower leg, and the tail. There we go. Quite happy with how that's come through. Whoops. Drop it again, done. Well don't you? Just give the brush a clean. Maybe cheap, but it still needs cleaning. Right. And then for the grey, I'm going to use this um, uh, AV wash. It's called Pale Grey. I'm going to get a different little pot out because I don't want to. I don't want the darker tones to get in the way. I'm just going to put that in there, and it's just like a, a, a grey wash. And in fact, I'll probably change brushes. And I'm just going to do all over the horse flesh. And I do this while it's still, while the darker colour is still drying because I actually want them to sort of run together. The bubbles there, which I don't really want. I 
There we go, that's better. And now we'll just leave them to dry. So right, everything is pretty much dry. You can see here the horses are largely done. They're looking okay, a bit shiny. But that's the washes for you. Like that chestnutty colour. I mean, look, the definition of the the or the definition from the model using the contrast paints and the washes has really brought out the the tones in that horse. Less so in the darker ones, but even so, if you get the light right, you can see it. So next up, I'm going to use Iraqi sand. Um, I'm just going to dry brush over the top just to sort of dull it down and act as a sort of glorified highlight. And there you go, and that's job done. It's uh, simply painted horses using contrast paints and a bit of cheating. So let me get my turntable out and I'll show you what they look like. So here you go, uh, there's the, the various, fig various horses done. You can see um, this is the grey which has been finished with, well started with obviously Apothecary Grey. You got this guy which was using Gore Grunter Fur. Um, this one here was using the Sigor Brown. This one here was using the uh, Wildwood. And this one using the uh, Templar Black. And I think they, they come out very simply, very easily this way. Let me take the paints away. You can actually see the horses a little bit better. And I think the effect is quite, quite good, um, quite simple. You get a little bit of, uh, um, a little bit of highlighting, a little bit of shading, without real huge amount of effort. And so there you go. There's the completed unit with their riders on them, um, and the base is done. And I'm quite pleased with how they've come out. The horses are okay, um, as you say. They, they always look better once they're based up and once they've got the figures on and everything but um, I think the dry brushing takes some of the shininess away from the figure and just gives a little bit of um, highlighting without being OTT but you can see it was dead easy to do these cavalry uh, didn't take long at all and um, you know it was quite I'm quite pleased with the result um, they'll join my medieval uh, retinue of uh, riders these as uh, these are nice, they're, they're fairly early period figures, they're, um, I mentioned I think right at the very beginning, they're um, Claymore figures, um, obviously some of their earlier range, but um, yeah, I'm quite pleased how they came out, and the horses actually look really good, so the horses came out really well, and I think uh, hopefully give me a good indication how I do horses quickly and easily, and make life just that little bit easier when you're doing cavalry. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, please give it a like and don't be afraid to share it with your friends because you never know, it might be helpful and they might appreciate finding another way of doing the dreaded cavalry that we all loathe doing. <laughs> anyway, this is Dom signing out. Stay safe, enjoy your games and I'll see you again soon.